We usually make the model out of wax, and it's an original design. It's made specifically for the client's needs. Fabrication is something that's handmade. We already have the metal, and we make it by hand. A resetting is where we will take a client's diamond, either her mother's or her grandmother's, and oftentimes the mounting has expired. I think having something unique as you are is very, very important. I think that's really the driving force for most brides today. Normally we ask half down when we do any special orders, um, and that's customary in the industry. So we really cut out a good chunk of the middleman profit. To set things lower for someone that's very active is very important, and maybe not even prong, do bezel, so something is recessed just even a little bit lower so it's very smooth. So what we like to do to protect the diamond is to put the metal all the way around the stone to protect it so it will not chip. But it also makes it very easy to wear, especially for someone that's very active or is in the medical profession. I mean, you can imagine the stone setting up and you're trying to pull a load of laundry out of the washing machine. That metal will actually catch the edge of the diamond and many, many women chip their diamonds. We have a very cute saying, you wouldn't garden in a $10,000 pair of shoes or a $10,000 dress. So we really want you to take care of your ring, treat it like something that's precious and that you love. Safety, that is very important because especially for men, if they work in electrical or construction, you never want your spouse to lose their finger because they have their ring on. Quite often brides come in with a photograph of something that they like and in their minds they think, oh, that's really what I want. But when, in actuality, when they actually start tr trying the rings on, they discover that, oh, that ring doesn't look so good on them. So it is a process of trying on a lot of rings, seeing what style looks the best. A lot of it has to do with the length of the hand. Let's talk about the quality of diamonds. We have the carat weight. That means how big is the stone? But carat weight doesn't always interpret into diameter of the stone because the stone can be off make, which is the cut of the stone. And we have a little saying, the magic is in the make. How well does that diamond perform? Does the light enter the stone, reflect, and come back out the top? You don't really need light on the outside of the stone to make the stone beautiful. And you can have a stone that has color. It can be a fancy color. It can be yellow. The darker pink it is, the more expensive it is, or blue. The color grading starts at D and goes down to Z. And everybody would ask, where's the ABC? Well, they say that's reserved for God. <laughs> so we're not, just God and the angels have that. So we start at D. We look at diamond and we grade it under 10 power magnification. So you do need to take the time, learn how to use a loop. Just don't run in and buy something because you'll probably be unhappy later. Carat weight doesn't always mean the diameter of the stone or the size of the stone. It's more important that you have the proportioning, which is the cut of the stone. Elbows on the table, hands together, and look at the diamond. Come all the way up. That's how you look at a diamond. Does she want it to be gold? Does she want it 14 here, 18 here? Does she want platinum? Does she want it to be white? Platinum is very expensive. So not everybody can afford platinum because what's been happening is that we've been using white gold for a long time, but the white gold turns yellow and it doesn't stay white. Tungsten carbide, which is a very popular metal for men, and the titanium, it's a very nice light metal, very easy for them to wear. But in reality, the bride and groom usually has very different tastes and very rarely do they buy a matching ring. So if she wants a wedding ring and an engagement ring, it's important that those two fit together properly. That's where the custom process comes in and that's where you need to allow plenty of time. Please don't wait too long to order your rings. You don't want to be stressed out running down to the jewelry store, I mean, hours before your wedding. March is always a good time to go shopping and look for wedding rings and don't wait to the last minute. This is the kind of a ring that is very difficult to wear another ring with. So if you want a wedding set, you need to think of that in advance. The two rings are made to fit together. You can take the solitaire, pull out the diamond, and put it into the matching wedding set. This is an actual wedding set. Two pieces that are made and they match perfectly. Oftentimes it's very difficult to get a matching wedding ring. This is an emerald, which is a beautiful stone. This is May's first stone. So you really need to budget yourself for about two months. And that's really a great guideline for the groom and the bride. That way the bride has an understanding 
what the groom should spend, and then the groom also has an understanding of what he should spend and what is appropriate. This is the rainbow sapphire ring. It shows all the different colors that sapphire comes in. And we actually can create a perfect rainbow spectrum with sapphires. Gay men traditionally will buy a simple band, something in platinum, maybe with a diamond. The women tend to buy more of the multicolor sapphires. Again, like in any couple, they have different tastes. Maybe 10% by matching. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you about ring sizing. 